Tonight, huge news in the Bridgegate scandal. Christie appointee David Wildstein pleads guilty to federal charges. Two other officials indicted. I'll talk to a former New Jersey governor who says Christie certainly should have known what was going on at the bridge that day. Then six Baltimore police officers now facing charges in the death of Freddie Gray. Will that help calm things down in Charm City? And corruption in Albany out of control. It seems like a new domino falls every week. I just met with a group of respected officials who are trying to fix that mess, and you'll hear how it went. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in tonight for Richard French, and we begin tonight with Bridgegate. David Wildstein pleading guilty to two federal charges this morning. Governor Chris Christie appointed Wildstein to the Port Authority. Wildstein admitted the lane closures were political payback because the mayor of Fort Lee didn't endorse Christie as he ran for re-election. Wildstein also admitted they closed the lanes on the first day of school because that would have the maximum impact on traffic. At the time, he said, a traffic study caused the jam. U.S. Attorney Paul Fishman said this. Traffic study story was a sham, a total fabrication that Baroni, Kelly, and Wildstein created and used to execute their scheme and to cover up their misdeeds and their misuse of public resources. And the plot thickens. Outside the courthouse today, Wildstein's attorney said Christie knew about the lane closures and that evidence exists that proves it. But Christie tweeted this today, quote, I had no knowledge of or involvement in the planning or execution of this act. Wildstein will be back in court for sentencing on August 6th. And two other people have just been indicted. Governor Christie's former Deputy Chief of Staff Bridget Kelly and former Port Authority official Bill Baroni. Fios One News' Samantha Liebman joins us now for that part of the story. She's live outside federal court in Newark. Sam? Well, Andrew, in pleading guilty today, David Wildstein implicated Bridget Kelly and Bill Baroni in what the U.S. attorney says was an elaborate scheme to exact political retribution, but also wreaked havoc on the residents of Fort Lee. They callously victimized the people of Fort Lee who were just trying to get to school, go to work, or travel wherever else they needed to go. The laws of the United States do not permit this kind of behavior, and the public has the right to expect better. U.S. Attorney Paul Fishman referring to former Port Authority official David Wildstein, Governor Christie A. Bridget Kelly, and Christie's top appointee to the Port Authority, Bill Baroni. A nine-count indictment alleges Baroni and Kelly, along with Wildstein, used their authority to conspire to close lanes on the George Washington Bridge in September 2013 as punishment for Fort Lee Mayor Mark Sokolich not endorsing the governor in his re-election bid. Wildstein pleading guilty to two counts of conspiracy in what's become known as Bridgegate. Mr. Wildstein who was then the director of interstate capital projects at the Port Authority, admitted in federal court this morning that he and others orchestrated a deliberate an illegal scheme to reduce the access lanes from three to one. The indictment alleges Kelly ordered Wildstein to orchestrate the lane closures, and all three conspired to not respond to Mayor Sokolich's pleas for help. Even after officials at the Port Authority learned of the closures, Fishman says Baroni perpetuated the cover-up by claiming it was part of a traffic study. His lawyer quick to respond Friday. He did not commit any of the acts for which he stands accused. By contrast, no one disputes that David Wildstein is a criminal and a liar. Bridget Kelly also reacted today. I never ordered or conspired with David Wildstein to close or realign lanes at the bridge for any reason, much less for retribution. I do not know Mayor Mark Sokolich, and I certainly harbor no ill feelings towards him. And while Wildstein's lawyer claims Christie knew about the closures, Fishman won't say whether they're looking into the governor. That based on the evidence that is currently available to us, we're not going to charge anybody else in this scheme. Now, Baroni and Kelly are scheduled to be arraigned here in federal court on Monday morning. If convicted, they each face up to 86 years in prison. That's the latest here from federal court in Newark. We'll send it back to you, Andrew. All right, Samantha Liebman live in Newark. Thanks very much. Now, a short time ago, I spoke to Richard Cody about Bridgegate. State Senator Cody is also a former Democratic governor of New Jersey. Governor Cody, first of all, your reaction to the guilty plea today by David Wildstein, the indictments of Bill Baroni uh, and Bridget Kelly, as well as the press conference from U.S. Attorney Fishman. Uh, it's a very, very <coughs> sad day for the state of New Jersey, its residents, uh, without question. When you have government employees using governor, 
resources for political reasons and, and the way they did uh, picking a day when it's the first day of back to school for children, it just, it can't get any worse than that. So a bad day for all of us uh, in the state of New Jersey without question. There is a lot more that we will play out in all of this, but let's assume for the time being that we learn nothing more about Governor Christie's involvement, personal involvement in this scheme in any way. What's the impact just from what we know today? How does that impact Governor Christie's ability to govern the state of New Jersey going forward? Well, it hurts without question because obviously people are going to think more negative about him now. And the people that did what they did, um, Dorothy from Kansas didn't appoint them. The governor uh, appointed them. And these people took it upon themselves to think that this was proper uh, to do and understand it was be, uh, being done during the course of the re-election for the governor. Uh, so clearly politics was in the front of their mind and shouldn't have been in their mind at all. And they were sending a message, if you don't endorse, we're going to get you. If you're not helping, we're going to get you. And unfortunately, uh, there was a lot of that culture going around then, and hopefully it's gone, but uh, we just don't know. But clearly, um, the governor wanted to win and win big, and these people went out on their own. I don't think, by the way, Andrew, that the governor uh, ever came up with this idea or participated in the idea. However, the question remains, when did he know and what did he do about it? And your answer speaks to the overall political climate and, and public opinion in the state of New Jersey. But what about the way Trenton operates and will continue to operate? The governor has been able to continue getting things done in Trenton, despite what we've already known about Bridgegate. Do you think what we've learned today changes that? Does it make it more difficult for Chris Christie to govern in Trenton? Well, I think it makes it a lot more difficult. And if you're going to continue on this presidential thing, it makes it only worse because people are saying, you know, he's never here. We do have a lot of issues in Trenton that aren't being addressed, or aren't getting done. Uh, so this puts a lot of pressure on him to say, hey, let's back off from that thing and let's get down to governing New Jersey and let, let this play out as it does. Uh, there's obviously, in my opinion, uh, some more indictments to come. Uh, affecting his people, which is, again, unfortunate. Uh, listen, I don't want to see any governor uh, have this kind of a scandal. It's happened. He's got to stand up and say how horrible it was. Uh, he didn't come up with the idea, but I apologize to our residents that it happened at all on my particular watch and move on from there. You're uniquely positioned to be able to speak about what it's like being the governor of New Jersey. When you were acting governor, how much day-to-day -day involvement did you have in the operations of the Port Authority? Had there been a, a, a big event on the George Washington Bridge, would you have been involved in it? Would you have known about it? How, how much day-to-day -day involvement is there for a governor and, the, and with the Port Authority? What, what, when you're governor, and we did change the law, uh, Andrew, <laughs> to, to say it's no longer acting as governor. We, um, I was in receipt every morning and every night events going on around the state of New Jersey. That's a normal thing for a governor's office to do for the governor. So when you have this huge, huge backup at the George Washington Bridge going on not one day, but two days or three days, you know about it the first day. So your staff says, here's this, here's that, so forth and so on. Conversations with it between your chief of staff, deputy chiefs of staff, whomever the Port Authority would uh, include you in on that. So you know what's going on at the, the Port Authority, and when something like this happens, which was monumental, you, you've got the mayor of Fort Lee every hour calling and saying, listen, my residents are just going crazy over this. Uh, we've got health and safety issues here. Ambulance can't get by. Police cars can't get by. Uh, this is a disaster. You know about it without question. Finally, Governor, a quick speculation question. David Wildstein's attorney has said before, said again today that that Wildstein can prove that Governor Christie knew what was going on during the Bridgegate uh, events. What happens to Chris Christie if that's true, if, we can, if it's proven that he knew what was happening as it was happening? Well, we do know because there are pictures of Mr. Christie, uh, the Governor Christie, and uh, Mr. Wildstein at the 9-11 uh, uh, event uh, that year. And Mr. Wildstein's people, I think, are alleging they had the conversation them. Mr. Christie says he doesn't recollect the conversation, so it may be a, uh, one of those he said, she said things. We don't know, but I think other people would have to be able to say, oh, I also had a conversation with him about it. And the other thing that, that doesn't look good is this 
idea that there was a real traffic study, as Mr. Christie expounded on for weeks and weeks. We all know that in today's age, to do a traffic study, you don't have to put cones out. You go through the computer and you put in all the data about the cars coming and going, what time, so forth and so on. And in five minutes, it will spit out to you what you want to know. So a traffic study was BS from day one, and it's BS today. But if we start getting more information and more proof, to be more specific, that Governor Christie knew what was going on in Bridgegate, is it time to start thinking about whether he can finish his term? Well, I think proving it is something else. Uh, so at this point, you've got to give him the benefit of the doubt until more things come out. And the other thing that I think is going to be very revealing is who are the unindicted co-conspirators and what did they do? Uh, I would think it was pro uh, probably during the cover-up, which is just as significant as to what happened. Uh, that's, that's a bad charge, and uh, that's going to play out over the next few months, and I think it's going to be very interesting who these people are and how close they are or are not to the governor. Former New Jersey Governor Dick Cody, thank you very much on such a busy day. Thank you, Andrew. Reaction now from political analyst Steve Adubato. Steve is the host of One on One, which airs on Fios One News New Jersey. And Steve, your reaction to today's developments as well as what you just heard from Governor Cody. Well, first of all, you know, the, the part of what uh, Dick Cody said that I agree with is that it's a sad day in New Jersey. It's uh, devastating when people in high-level government positions um, are indicted by the highest level federal prosecutor, Paul Fishman, for being engaged in such activities that impact people's lives, that snarl traffic in this way. We talk about traffic, and it sounds somewhat innocuous. We're talking about children on the first day of school. We're talking about first responders who potentially uh, could have been you know, responding to a situation involving people's health and safety um, that would not have been able to get to where they needed to go. It is unconscionable that, that this took place, and the fact that Mr. Wildstein said what he did publicly and admitted his guilt speaks for itself. And now um, they are arguing as to who did what and who didn't do what. And you know, now everyone's in the process of trying to save their respective behinds. But, you know, we don't really know what is being said to the U.S. attorney in private right now. Even if this never gets back to Governor Christie in terms of the planning or the knowledge of Bridgegate, Steve, there's been a lot of allegations that Governor Christie created a bully culture or even the culture of corruption that allowed for those events to take place. Is Christie now guilty ostensibly in the public specter, even if he's never indicted or convicted? Guilty of what? Well, guilty of creating that culture that, that fostered or allowed this sort of thing to happen. Look, the bottom line is these people were appointed by the governor. The governor knows he takes responsibility for putting those people in those positions. Um, and that's not debatable. He's got to be devastated by this. He knows that no one else put those people in those positions. Ultimately, they are responsible for, for those, their actions. Um, it's an abomination what they did. The question becomes, to what degree do we hold the leader responsible for those specific, particular actions? I would say this. To say that Governor Christie didn't know about it, I don't think he did know about it. Is that enough? For a leader? No. I believe there is a potential situation that says, how could they have think they could have gotten away with such um, actions? Um, you know, Governor Christie clearly, as he goes out on the presidential campaign, if in fact he chooses to run, is going to have to answer those questions. And by the way, respectfully, Andrew, saying that there's a bully culture or a culture because the governor has a certain style and a persona and shifting to a culture of corruption are two vastly different things, and I am not comfortable with the analogy moving from one to the other. There are an awful lot of people who are aggressive in their public persona and then moving to the culture of corruption are two totally different things. All right, political analyst Steve Adubato, the host of One on One, which airs on Fios One News New Jersey. Steve, thanks very much. And as Steve mentioned, Bridgegate is turning into something of a he said, he said. David Wildstein's lawyer says Governor Christie knew about the lay enclosures. Christie denies it. Will the governor still take a political hit from it? We're going to get into that with our panel next.